there's a multitude of factors that make now a unique moment in time when we talk about the innovation that is transforming the healthcare system. The reason that healthcare is one of the last verticals to really embrace uh, the emerging technology around software, around data analytics, around cloud and mobile is partly because they didn't want to, but partly it's because they weren't able to. When you're dealing with private patient data information uh, between multiple constituents, it becomes really difficult to envision a health system or an insurer voluntarily giving up that data and allowing it to exist in this scary thing called the cloud or to exist on someone's mobile phone or to exist on an iPad. You know, the fact that it's people's lives and a different standard of care is, is necessary and appropriate means that technology in general gets introduced more slowly. I think it will nevertheless succumb to the same things that all these other industries are succumbing to, which is this cloud plus mobile revolution. Privacy, security, in healthcare is paramount. Um, but at the same time, it's equally important in other regulated industries like finance, like real estate, like all the other verticals that NEA's SaaS practice has gone about building practices that are knocking down walls. And finally, you're seeing the healthcare system understand that you can protect privacy, you can protect data, while at the same time embracing new technology. We as a country spend $2.7 trillion on healthcare, just on healthcare. That's, that's mind boggling. Two trillion of that 2.7 is health insurance. And $2 trillion in a sector that has seen ridiculously low amounts of innovation and disruption over the last 30 years. There's a lot you can do to really simplify the overall healthcare experience by using technology, particularly mobile technology, technology to improve the, the experience that consumers have with both their health plans and their physician. Bright Health is a new health insurance company. It's geared to individuals and uh, works very closely with health systems across the country well, in a very collaborative way to provide consumers with a better, more connected experience to their physicians. So in healthcare, there's been a proliferation of uh, point solutions, tools uh, that are really very helpful, but solving one particular problem. Our view is by working together with a population of people and a health system, we can aggregate those tools, those point solutions in a more comprehensive way, so it's much more meaningful for both the physician and the patient. So the combination of uh, technology, healthcare analytics, and health insurance expertise is really unique in this space right now. I love bragging on Bob's behalf because I know he doesn't do it himself. Um, from 2000 to 2009, Bob was CEO of a, of a company called United Healthcare. He took United Healthcare from $17 billion in revenue to $90 billion in revenue. When he left, United Healthcare was the largest insurer of health in the United States. What Bob is doing at Bright Health is exactly what he did at United. Find a differentiated niche in the market. For United, it was group and family plan. For Bright Health, it's the individual health system market. And build a product that aligns the incentives between physician, consumer, and insurer in a way that allows for hyperscale. I think we're on the cusp of a really significant market transformation. The major group carriers, the Blue Cross plans, the Aetna's, the Cigna's, are aggregating, consolidating, focusing on the group business. Long-standing health insurance companies have struggled in the marketplace, individual marketplace. In fact, some are pulling out um, here recently. And to me, that really underscores the need for a different model. I think the main reason incumbents don't do this sort of thing is that any new business opportunity, you know, how, no matter how big the potential for it, starts out really small. So if you're a really big company and I show you the forecast, the most exciting forecast that this new startup could come up with, it's not going to move the needle for you. So why should you pay attention to it? You're only going to pay attention to it when it gets big. The market opportunity is immense and there are very few startups, very few businesses where you can actually work in uh, over the next five or 10 years, develop a multi-billion dollar company. Health insurance is one of those areas. The thing about healthcare is, you know, the end user is always the consumer. Right, um, but the consumer, unfortunately for all of us, doesn't control the dollars that that pay for that care. People that pay for that care are self-insured employers, 
insurance companies and providers, hospital systems and, and physicians. And so, you know, our focus has, instead of the apps focused on consumers, has been on real products and tech-enabled services, focused on people actually paying for those products. Employers actually cover the vast majority of Americans' health care costs. 160 million Americans are covered by their employer. Employers pay for about 90 percent of those health care costs. And so we at Collective Health are focused on helping employers who are self-paying, paying out of pocket, do that as efficiently, as effectively, as clearly as possible. The gulf that we're trying to bridge is that gulf between what we all experience and feel is a very, very, very high standard of health care in this country. When you go to the doctor, when you go to the hospital, you feel like you're really well taken care of, but that's not matched by the experience that we feel when we actually pay for health care. What Collective Health has done is create a software-based ecosystem that allows members to understand their benefits, to understand their co-pays and deductibles, and to access health care in a smart and efficient way that allows them to not leave any money on the table and feel like they're maximizing their health care dollar. The kind of consumer experience that I want for Collective Health is one that's as good as any retail or consumer experience you might have. The healthcare system in the United States is pretty complex when you think of all the different entities that are involved. Collective Health really is trying to bind all of these together, much in the same way that an American Express or a Visa binds the retail sort of system or, or industry together, providing that kind of centralized or shared plumbing and payment and analysis and data capability for everyone in that healthcare ecosystem so that we can view things in healthcare much the same way. What Salesforce, what Workday, what NetSuite have done for those technology stacks, Collective Health is doing for the healthcare technology stack inside the employer. And so a lot of people ask me, well, why Collective Health? Why now? And it's precisely because the technology is at a state where we can fulfill that vision in a way that we, was simply just not possible even three or four years ago. Since NEA led Collective Health's Series B in 2014, the company has been on an absolute tear. The quality of their customers really speaks to the product market fit and how the collective software stack is resonating. If you think about how much healthcare represents in terms of just percentage of GDP in this country, it's one-fifth. In terms of wallet share, the customer experience needs to represent that one-fifth. It's easy to lose sight when you're selling to an employer or when you're selling to a health system or when you're selling to an insurer that the success is not just saving money, but success is having the patient, the member, the consumer feel empowered and feel happy with the product. Patients want to be able to get health care from their phone anywhere, anytime, and they're very uh, efficacious things you can do if you enable them to do that. But we have this company, CareZone, that uh, we funded uh, initially because we loved the people and we loved what they were doing. And it was very much a patient-only sort of benefit, and that is an application you could use to manage the health care of your loved one. Every day at CareZone, we meet tens of thousands of individuals who need help, who want a better experience with health care, who are using us to try to get a handle on all the information and materials they're trying to manage. For the most part, the largest players in the healthcare uh, system have really failed to engage consumers. They're great when you're in their offices, but as soon as you leave their office, it's not as though you have your insurance company's apps on your phone or your pharmacy's apps or your health system's apps. So what we really do well, our forte, is identifying health-conscious consumers and engaging them in all the diversity of services that they might require, from pharmacy and insurance to physicians and clinical services. That's our opportunity to just make life a lot simpler for them and then to get those businesses and partners better connected to the their own consumers. So at this point, we have millions of consumers who use CareZone, um, a very large library of medications that they've scanned in, and those bottles are actually really interesting. They tell us a lot, and they tell the health system a lot. For example, they tell you whether meds are expired. They tell you whether meds might be contraindicated, whether they've been uh, uh, prescribed by clinicians in conflict with one another or redundantly. At the end of the day, the only system that really matters from the patient's perspective is what do they have in their medicine cabinet. Healthcare businesses traditionally have been pretty hard to build um, because it's been so difficult to aggregate a lot of consumers. And what we've been able to do with millions of consumers at this point is walk into a partner and say, we'd like to interact with you. And their first response is, why should we bother interacting with you? And then we present, well, we represent roughly you know, a, a few million people, many hundreds of thousands of which are actually your patients.
consumers and patients want better connectivity to healthcare. They want to do a better job. They want to have more transparency. And so despite some of the resistance that we see from some of the largest players in the marketplace, that change will occur. The net result will be individuals who can manage their health from the convenience of their own home, who can get access to healthcare wherever they are as opposed to wherever their providers are, who are spending as little as they possibly can to get the best possible service, becoming much more educated, savvy consumers. The net result of that is patients are better off, CareZone is better off, and ultimately the whole system is better off. You know, we play as a team at NEA. That's our greatest strength. And so we've brought many investments to our healthcare partners and said, hey, we think this is terrific. Look what it can do. And they say, yes, but there's a couple little things you should know about. And a lot of the time, that means we don't make an investment, but some of the time, it means we do. And when we do, we're a whole lot smarter. We're at talking about investing at the intersection of two massive sectors, technology and healthcare services. Having had really deep portfolio building experiences in both, being able to pull on the experiences of a Tableau or a Workday or a Salesforce on one end of the spectrum, and on the other, pulling on experiences like Bravo Health, like Caremark, like Amerigroup, that brings our entrepreneurs a depth of vision that I don't think any other group can provide. All three of those companies are interacting with patients at different points along the healthcare journey. The common theme is that they can build massive companies and, and achieve really important outcomes in complementary ways. And ultimately, what I think you're going to see is all three of these businesses really take a huge bite out of that $2 trillion market opportunity.